London nightlife is plummeting. Like, let's be honest, the Fridays and Saturday nights, and I can only speak for London, is not popping off like it used to. A lot of people can buy a house now on a 5% deposit initiative. Why are you lying to people? Why are you saying that you're trying to make it easier to get on the property ladder? I think there's a correlation there, Rishi. I think that means you need to prioritise state schools, Rishi. The private schools are fine because the private school system have the alumni. Young people have decided not to go back to work and they've developed things like anxiety and depression. God forbid they decide they don't actually want to work a job that's not in the field they didn't study. My baby looking too good, yeah she perfect, know she worth it When she pull up all them and them flirting And yeah she know that she a dime, call up on my line Told her baby bring it one time, yeah Girl sit down and bring it Hey, it's your girl Yezzy is there If you're watching this right now, there's something I need to tell you that's pretty important Want to road to 10,000 subscribers on our Instagram page It's heysis underscore UK when we get to 10k, we're going to be able to up the show on levels that you didn't even think were imaginable. But the only way we can do that is with your help. New subscribers mean better shows, meaning new heights. So when you get a time, which is now, that would be great if you could do that now. <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe to us on our Instagram page, Hasis underscore UK, and on the YouTube channel down below. I'll leave you to it. <laughs> Yo, what's really good though? It's your girl, yes, yes, sir. And you are locked in for another banging episode of Hey Sis. Your girl's been on your FYPs. I've been on your Explore pages. Why? Because I've been freeing the realness. Freeing the realness is not easy work to do, man. But I'm back again to do exactly that. I feel like it's my mission in life. To talk up the things, of course. If you are watching on YouTube or you're listening over on Spotify, yo, my sis or my bro that's listening in, this is a living room talk, man, and I don't think I've ever spoken about that. Maybe I have in the early seasons. But when I say this is living room talk, it's the kind of conversation that you don't say outside the living room. You keep it into your homes, but I need to say it now. It's weighing on my heart because our favourite person in the world, a Mr Rishi Sunak, has delivered a speech about welfare reform. If you are listening, just know I'm doing air quotes when I say reform. And his initiative to make young people contribute to society, get them back to work. We're going to be talking about the pros and cons. I'm going to try and be unbiased in this conversation. However, I do feel like it's good to hear a voice of someone who isn't the 1%, you know, and someone that actually understands what's going on in the grounds. I don't know who Rishi has advising him in his immediate party, uh, his friends whether it be his group of people he works with that said to him yo this speech right here great stuff uh, so here we are freeing the realness but before we go any further you need to subscribe the subscription button is literally down below and what subscribing to the channel actually allows us to do is to up our game whether it be equipment whether it's able to get a list guests as in the upper enchalant okay we're giving you grammar or to give you events in a real life. Yes, events, workshops. Ooh, child, we're revealing too much. But it's all going to be happening for Hey Sis UK. So make sure you get into it. Also, if there's other ways you want to support, maybe you're international, you can't actually be in England when we're doing some of the stuff we're doing physically before we do become worldwide, as in in person, then down below is a PayPal link to give a one-off I support your ting. And if you're feeling like a baller, <laughs> Sure, caller, then you can give a monthly I support your thing down in the description box below. I think that's about everything. I think it's time for us to just get into it, eh? But I feel like where are my manners? I haven't even asked you, how's your week, man? I'm just dropping episode after episode. I'm not even checking in on you. Was it decent? Was it not decent? Was Rishi's speech on welfare reform uh, striking a chord or two? We're going to get into it, that's for sure. I'm going to take a sip of my Hey Sis mug before anything. It, you know, this got to be done. And if you're loving the mug, you're thinking, oh my gosh, they cute. You can get yourself one down below in the description box. Come on now. Mm. I'm feeling good. So, <clears throat> I don't think it's been up to two weeks. And Rishi Sunak stepped to the podium and told the whole nation, in the words of Kim Kardashian, get up your ass and work. I get it. 
I get it. You know, he said he wants to be on the side of hardworking taxpayers. And I'm, I'm looking to my left. I'm looking to my right. I'm looking at myself. I am one of those people, the hardworking taxpayers. However, I do understand the plight of people who can't be in certain positions. He started off the speech talking about a salute to Mr. Ian Duncan Smith. Now, if you don't know who he is, he's the guy that woke up one day and said, you know what? I know we've got six different types of benefits going on, but I want to simplify it into one benefit called universal credit. Now, what my actual thing that I want to do with this universal credit is not that I care about people on benefits. No, 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 no. God forbid. I just want to give them an initiative. When they look at the numbers and they weigh up how much they're getting paid on universal credit, that is better off for you to just go back to work. And it's worked. I'm not going to lie. It has worked. However, and I think this was introduced around 2010, okay? When they did this, I'm pretty sure they didn't know something like COVID-19 was going to come. And ever since COVID-19, a lot of young people have, you know, it's been, it's taken a while. It's hit people. The hospitality industry has been hurt a lot. London nightlife is plummeting. Like, let's be honest, the Fridays and Saturday nights, and I can only speak for London, is not popping off like it used to. You find a lot more people go to curated events. They might happen on a monthly basis or quarterly basis where you feel like, okay, I'm going to have fun here because it's very specific, the music I'm listening to. I feel like the culture of going to a certain club on a Friday and Saturday night on a weekly basis unless you've got the budget it's not practical because first off people are exhausted i can't remember the last time someone said i'm going clubbing that sentence haven't heard it in a long time second of all besides from being exhausted where's the money the cocktails are on average about 16 pounds a pop you're lucky if you can find a place that does a happy hour and that's a two-for-one situation however some of these places that do happy hours you do realise that people finish working at half five. So when you stop the happy hours at five or four or six, the likelihood of people enjoying it is very slim unless you're literally rushing out the door outside of work or the people that do happy hour initiatives on a weekday. Thursday through Sunday. Or no, they'll do like Sunday to Thursday, but then you miss the window of Friday and Saturday. I don't know about you. But the streets of London aren't exactly heaving on a Friday and Saturday night. I can't speak for up north. So all of that is already triggering people. And then we're in the midst of a cost of living crisis. And Rishi doesn't look around and say, you know what, let me read the room and see how things go. Let's weather this storm that we're going through. He comes and decides, OK, I'm going to talk about the fact that, yeah, we cut, we cut in the money. We cut in the money and some people need to get their asses back to work. So he salutes Ian Duncan Smith and he goes on to say something that I felt was a bit weird. You know, as an educated man, I'm sure he's gone to the best of best when it comes to schools. And coming from his background, he's well off. He's affluent. Uh, his wife. I mean, she's minted, to say the least. So I'm pretty sure he's in positions in his life where he can, I don't want to say be picky, but you can choose. You can have a standard. And I believe everyone, if you put the work in, you get a standard. But he said that a lot of people after COVID, young people have decided not to go back to work and they've developed things like anxiety and depression. And even if we put anxiety and depression to the side, it's not to simplify or say it's not important, but you do realise when people go on to study, uh, you know, in university and they decide to take on a depth if they're getting student loan and they have a career path in mind, god forbid they decide they don't actually want to work a job that's not in the field they didn't study god forbid you decide to go to university and have standards i mean a lot of young people even if they're not on benefits they don't want to work a job that they didn't study if you've put in three years of your life into something where the same government told you if you follow this path of education you are guaranteed a job a graduate job, an apprenticeship job, something. And you come out of it, a couple thousand pounds down the hole, three years of your life swallowed up, maybe an extra year if you did a kind of sandwich course situation. And someone goes, by the way, we haven't got anything for you. 
some people are going to be a bit miffed let's be honest when it comes to apprenticeship opportunities in london our capital city that's supposed to be hustling and bustling there used to be about 40 percent on the market where vacancies were specifically for graduates yeah it's gone down to 30 percent you've got the north of england has actually got more opportunities in regards to apprenticeship opportunities and then you're telling the same young people who have probably developed depression and anxiety because of the disappointment in the workforce right now that I don't care if you don't want to work but you're going to work and you're going to work any job you can get your hands on you can garnish it in a lot of different words as much as you like Rishi you can use words like contribute to society and we want to help you with anything that you're going through mentally but if you strip it all back and we take out the vocabulary and we take out all the innuendos, what you're really saying is that I don't care what you want out of your life or the quality of life you want. You're going to do what I tell you to do because I need everybody working and contributing to the tax system. That's it. I mean, I've come out of university myself. I've worked jobs that I didn't want to work considering how much I put into education because you feel pressured not to contribute to your society, Rishi, but you feel pressured to keep up with the cost of living. The reality is I've got a lot of friends that went on to university and to find a job in London, you have to stay in London. To stay in London, if your family's not based in the capital city, you have to rent at these exuberant costs of living to actually live in the capital city with the hope a lot of young people are literally hanging on in London. Oh, England, yeah? Let me keep it surreal. A lot of young people are hanging on in England on the basis of hope that things will get better. But when you open your newspapers and you watch the TVs or you just look into anywhere, you're reminded at so many points in your life, especially your youth, you know, that it's only going to get harder. You talk about, oh, a lot of people can buy a house now on a 5% deposit initiative. Why are you lying to people? Why are you saying that you're trying to make it easier to get on the property ladder? When we all know most most of it is not really 100% ownership. You've got staircasing initiatives, shared ownership initiatives. You've got all these different initiatives where people are paying more than your average traditional mortgage. But you said it's to help people, to incentivize. Back in the day... You're supposed to be expected to buy your first house at 25, pay your 25 year mortgage and be done and enjoy the rest of your life. You know, 45, 50 plus, you're enjoying, you're mortgage free, you own your home. Now, the statistics show that first time buyers are on an average 33 years old. What's happening? It's getting very expensive. Inflation is literally choking people. And now you've said, yeah, get up and work. Now, when he did talk about things like, okay, you know what, the test, the actual test to see if someone's fit to work, we're going to be a lot tighter on that. This is the living room moment. And hear me out. When he said we are going to figure out who actually has the capability, who's actually fit to work. So if you're going for anything mentally inclined, like, for example, anxiety, we're going to give you what you need to work from home. I said, oh, Rishi said no one's getting away with anything. Then he said something else about the fact of, oh, you know, if you feel like you can't work and you're still going for a lot of mental issues, instead of giving you a cash transfer, we're going to give you the, the means that you need. So whether that be therapy or, um, you know, health wise exercise, things like that to help you get back to your old self. It kind of reminded me what's going on in America. So America is like they have this kind of strictness in giving money out and then they'll do things like food stamps. If you look at the landscape of them in America, mental health is plummeting. I've seen it myself. I've seen it in the states of New York. I've seen it in the states of LA through mental health and what it's led to when it comes to drug addiction and homelessness is very scary to see in person. Considering that a lot of us, we see America, our first impression of it anyway, is through a glazed lens, a very glossy lens of Hollywood. And Hollywood makes everything so shiny and nice in the land of opportunity. And then when we actually get to America, you realise... The opportunities are further than you think. 
And it's very easy to fall into a pit of, oh, lost opportunities that can turn you into this kind of spiral of mental health. From the GMOs that they got in the food out there, it's crazy. Half the stuff when it comes to medication and food that's allowed in that country, all I can say is, wow. Like, I don't know how that's allowed. I don't know how you're surviving it. When we dial back into the UK, yeah, and this is the living room moment I was talking about. When Rishi Sunak said, we're going to see who really deserves it. We're going to get on to the fraudsters. I said, listen, I ain't no snitch, okay? When it comes to the universal credit stuff, we all know somebody, whether it be your neighbor or whatever, we all know somebody that we've kind of side-eyed and gone, you know you can get back to work. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I know, I know, I'm not a hater. I'm just saying, side-eyed and small. So if you haven't heard what's going on, to the people that are claiming that you know you ain't got no business claiming. You've been finessing for a while. And shout out to you, though. Finesse if you have to finesse because we know this government is finessing us. But the people that are finessing Universal Credit, yeah. I'm just saying watch out, man, because Rishi is on your neck, okay? He is on your neck and he's coming down like a ton of bricks. It's been a nice ride. It has been, but I'm not going to lie. If you've seen this speech here, yeah, what this man said he's going to do you've been enjoying the cars the payments the transfers that come once a month uh, the free dental care uh, i don't know some of you might even be getting free travel it's nice you've been living the vida loca i'm sure if anybody could get away with it they would do it but if you don't know rishi is putting an end to all of that he said that the country's spending billions of pounds he said yeah rishi said that he's spending more on benefit payments than he is investing in the police, investing into schools, and investing into healthcare. I believe it because I've seen the state of uh, these state schools and it's terrible. So when Rishi, when you do this whole cleanup that you're doing to society, you're saying specifically, because that's who you targeted in the speech, that young people need to contribute to society. They need a sense of purpose. But what happened to dignity? Is it so bad that young people have a sense of dignity? And hear me out when I say this, yeah? There might be some young people that have worked and maybe if they're, what's it called, their caseworker, or I think it's the person that manages their kind of job search, says to them, you know, I want you to work in this field. The job is available. They're going to give it to you next week. If a young person now finds themselves working a job that they didn't study as a graduate, and that actually affects their mental health and it might lead to, you know, things like taking their life away, which is uncomfortable as a topic to speak about. But this is what happens. I think we've all been in situations where we've worked jobs for a sense of survival that really had us sad. There's been jobs that you're like, you know, I'd rather sit at home and wait for a better position. We're not talking about something that's so much better, but better than what this is right now because it doesn't actually contribute to my mental health. I don't think Rishi took that into account. That's the problem. I've listened to his speech. I've listened to short versions, long versions. I've read the articles. I've I've read the actual reform, the actual reform. And nothing in there, and if I've missed it, please bring it to my attention. Nothing in there actually says, oh, we want to help young people get jobs that they want, build careers that they've hoped for everything was just about money it was just about money and then it's like rishi was attacking he went on to talk about disability payments and I, I ain't even i'm not going to go into that realm yeah i'm just strictly going to talk about the young people there's something he did as well that i didn't really like and it low key and if you caught up on that let me know it's like rishi thought if he spoke about welfare reform and mentioned young people and pit taxpayers against young people that would somehow make young people get up their asses and contribute to society. I'm a taxpayer. But when you want to talk about the classes and you're low-key trying to put maybe the lower middle class against the working class, that's not the approach you want to take because you can have a parent that's a taxpayer and have a young person who's their child not working and contributing. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of parents that will tell you, i rather if my son or daughter went to study an apprenticeship, went to college or university and they haven't got the job that I feel like 
is best for their career path. I don't mind them not working. Yeah, I can subsidize their living to X amount. But there are a lot of young people. I know a lot of young people that try their best. They apply for jobs every day. They apply for work to actually have careers to give them a sense of dignity, to want to live in a very hard life right now. Being a young person in London is not easy. If you talk about the time frame of COVID and then coming out of it X amount of years later, young people and their minds have been flipped upside down. And I'm not saying you should let people be on benefits that don't deserve to be on benefits. But if you're saying you're investing more in universal credit payments than you are in schools, then that just goes to show that maybe there's a connection and link between that. Since you decided to neglect the schools, the same people in the state school system are now the people that are depending on the welfare state. I think there's a correlation there, Rishi. I think that means you need to prioritise state schools, Rishi. The private schools are fine because the private school system have the alumni, the same alumni that help their fellow rich parents and their children get into jobs and have careers that they're happy with. They're the ones that can take a year out and travel and come back because they know they have something to go back to. So then if you have admitted that you're spending more on welfare payments than you are in the schools, specifically state schools, and we already know that they're not performing as well as they should be, then hmm, maybe we should invest in paying the teachers a bit better so children get a better quality of education. Maybe we should support less fortunate families to enable children that every child should have a a laptop or a computer in their home so they're able to study, that every child can have three square meals a day. It wasn't too long ago that we found out that there is poverty going up in the north of England where children are lucky to get one meal in a day when that's actually classified as a stage of poverty. A lot of children aren't getting three meals a day. A lot of children are having two meals at school alone. A lot of parents spoke about the fact that they get scared with all the breaks that are happening in this this actual school curriculum from half term to the summer holidays. Summer holidays. Let me tell you the reality that's going on in this country. Yeah, The summer holidays are crippling to a lot of families because that means They are dependent on feeding their children three times a day, seven days a week. A lot of families are grateful for the fact that when their children go to school, that's at least two meals covered at the very least because schools are taking it upon themselves to say, hey, we need to give these children breakfast. We need to give them lunch. There's after school clubs as well that will still give them additional snacks there. So when we're talking about, oh, young people, they need to contribute, How is the government contributing in the young? You closed all the youth clubs because you said that it was harboring crime. Yet we're still experiencing crime. I don't know how they're getting their hands on all these knives, considering how tight the sanctions are. We don't have any initiatives that help children from lesser backgrounds get into actual sports activities and clubs. Because a lot of these clubs on average, when you want to join them, Parents need to have start money. And when I mean start up money is in you have to pay subs in order for your children to attend certain classes. Like let's just say, for example. And these are the ones that need a bit of money. Yeah? Say if your child wanted to join a tennis club, you already have to pay for them to be a part of the club. You have to pay for their uniform. You have to play for the rackets, all these things that are needed to be part of that. If we go into the somewhat cheaper sports, netball, for example, you still have to pay for trainers, clothing, all these things. In order to have children who become adults that contribute to your society, you need to make an investment in them, whether it be time or money. You can't now complain and say, oh, you know, I don't know why children aren't keen. I don't know why young people aren't keen. Oh, we're going to help you with therapy. That's fine. And when you do take these people to therapy, these young people that aren't giving back, are you actually going to take on board their worries about their future? Because a lot of young people are worried about if they're going to be somebody, if it's even worth going on in life. It, It really does get that deep. 
but what do I know? Uh, just the fact that I've lived and seen how this city has dwindled when it comes to investing in the youth. I've seen the fact that I can see why crime is happening when people don't really have hope for the future. But let's get on to these fraudsters, man. Uh, you know, the government has been cracking down on the fraudsters. It needs to be done. As a taxpayer, I'm not exactly going to be jumping over the moon knowing that people are claiming benefits that don't deserve it. However, it does make me think as well, the people that are supposed to be finding out who the fraudsters are, do we need them to go through training as well? I mean, you can tighten the sanctions of the assessment to say, okay, yeah, you, you're fit to work and you're not fit to work. But you know the people that are actually supposed to catch the fraudsters, yeah? There was a man a couple months ago. It did happen this year. Let me take a sip. <laughs> I think that's what we call a low-key tea break. There was a man a couple months ago who was claiming on having about, he claimed on about 100 children's names and how he was doing it was that he was changing the number all the time. No, he was changing the names and how he got caught out was that it was similar numbers. So they found him eventually, but how do we get to 100 kids? That's the thing I don't understand. There are people that say they're the pillar of society where documentaries have actually been made. I think it was SPAC Nation where they said, yeah, this church actually made me open up a benefit claim and they were taking the payments so I can contribute to them and things like that. We haven't heard anything about SPAC Nation to this day. I don't know who is in SPAC Nation's payroll, yeah, to get them out of this trouble, but wow. It is seamless. And that's what I'm saying. If you want to talk about, oh, we're cracking down on all this stuff, yeah? When we get to that 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 bit of good and evil, at the end of the day, money's always going to talk. There are people that will never be caught. There were always going to be fraudsters amongst us. Let's keep it very real. And then the people that suffer with this whole reform is going to be the working class and the lower middle class. You know why? Because they don't actually have the budget to have anyone fight for them on their behalf. That's the reality of it. But I will say one thing, though, Rishi. When you come steamrolling, talking about I'm cracking down on welfare. Couple things. One, I hope the savings that you make on cutting benefits even further, you actually invest it in the things that need to be done, like our NHS system. To get an appointment is ridiculous, even for people that are paying. Secondly... When you do cut from young people specifically, because you said that's who you're targeting, if there's an uproar, how are you going to combat that? How do you handle an uproar from young people? Because what I don't want to happen, Rishi, especially me as a hardworking taxpayer, if you cut the money from the young people, I don't want to start an uproar where some might just protest. That's what I'm hoping for. I hope like a, a nice protest... People speak up for their rights. Others might get aggressive and take things into their own hand. There might be a, a rise in crime where people are actually getting robbed on the street. Cars are getting broken into. We already know what's going on in central London. They're snatching phones out of hands. Watches from wrists dragging people out of their cars. It's getting very ugly. We all know that there has been a kind of decrease in tourists coming over in specific areas because of the snatch and grabs that's happening now if you cut the benefits will it get worse will people get their hands on more weapons to do shakedowns on people because i'll pay what yo <laughs> i see you you've been watching note taking you might have even shared with somebody don't think i don't know but you haven't even liked, you haven't even subscribed, and you sure as hell didn't drop a comment. Well, you know what you need to do now. You know, when I take a sip, you know exactly what that means. Yeah, I've given you enough time to do that. Let's get back to the episode. When Rishi is delivering this speech about, oh, I'm going to crack down on benefits, and we know he's targeting young people. My thing is this. We've seen what a lack of money can do to certain countries. It gets really ugly out here. 
It's only in central London that they've started snatching phones from hands, watches from wrists, and literally dragging people out of cars. You and I, we've seen the footage. I don't mind as a hardworking taxpayer to pay what I need to pay to walk the streets with peace on my mind. Because remember, Rishi won't know what's happening. He won't feel the effects of an uproar. He won't feel the effects of poverty rising in an area. But we will. Rishi, don't speak on the taxpayer's behalf, please. Please think of your initiative before anything. Because if the protests happen and the protests lead to actual crime rates going up, I'll be talking to you. Let's be very frank. The welfare reform. Mm, I feel like if the welfare reform was accompanied with getting graduates into their career roles. Oh, I would have said, yeah, Rishi. Man of the people. But because the narrative was very much just get them into work, get them into work. If they choose not to work, cut them off. It was like, whoa. Oh, I see. The lower middle class and the working class children don't get to actually st- work in their careers that they studied as graduates. No, we're going to make you do graduate degrees, you know, put you in depth and then tell you to go and get a job. Not in the sector that you studied. For me, it's kind of feeling like a setup now. Back in the day, they used to say, oh, you know, a lot of positions you shouldn't actually bother go to university for. You should just do the apprenticeship, rise up, and that's the better way to do it. Because the graduate route is seeming like a scam for lower middle class and working class children. Out of curiosity, I want to know how many people from lower middle class and working class backgrounds studied a degree course and when they came out as a fresh graduate, we're talking who got their first job in a sector that they studied in. Actual career path stuff. Hmm. That's one to ponder on. Anyway, you guys, let me know what you think about the welfare reform, the good, the bad, the ugly. Are you for it? Are you against it? in the comment section down below until then my book hey i'm the big sis you never had is out exclusively on spotify for subscribers only but don't worry i've made it very cost effective so go ahead and check it out it's like a telenovela in your ear new episodes every week if you want to be a big baller shot call and support the show i've got a paypal link down in the description box you can do a one-off or rolling subscription check you out just to say you know what we love you guys on Hasis UK. We support everything you're doing. And that allows us to take the show to a whole new level. The platform to Hasis to the world and back. You already know what it is. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. We're currently on 9,000 odd. I know, right? Won't he do it? To do that is Hasis underscore UK. I'll probably put it somewhere here. Voila. You can do that and what else oh yeah follow us on spotify so you can hear it in audio fashion in case you're at work and you're cheekily listening to us good on you man my little rebel check you out (laughs) until then i've got another episode coming up if there's anything in particular you want us to talk about don't be shy shoot a dm on the instagram page of course until then it's been your girl yes yes sir you've been listening to another episode of hey sis make sure you stay blessed Call the man them flirt And yeah, she know that she a dime Call up on my line Told her baby bring it one time Girl sit down and relax Girl let me put it on you No time for chit chat Because she move like a queen And I like what I see And I wanna get more of that I am dressed and he blows success Lay down as you decompress Come mind and forget the stress But the 9 to 5 Cause he tryna change his life He can't help it but to show his bad side So he me just see when he want that good ride Follow my stride You know you want a good time Candy card, I know it won't decline. You know how to please me, never tease me. Keep me in Givenchy, laced in Gucci. 